Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the 10th video in the KQL Advanced series. In the last session, we learned evaluate, narrow, and materialize. In this session, we'll discuss functions. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. All through these KQL courses, we've been writing queries that perform a specific sequence of events and produce a predictable outcome. This process often involves using existing functions native to the KQL language. The function is a pre-existing algorithm that can perform actions in multiple steps that are predefined to help provide a predictable outcome. These functions may have required or optional parameters that support the function and produce a reliable output. If we need to call a pre-existing function, IntelliSense helps us by providing a quick tab capability, as well as providing the arguments needed in most cases. There may be times when we want to reuse a common sequence of instructions, but a function doesn't exist. Or we may want to link many pre-existing functions together and call them all at one time to produce a predictable output. When we string together multiple sets of instructions inside of a query, we can save it as a variable. That variable can be called for the life of a query. But if we need to use the same sequence in a different query, we need to redefine the variable. Functions can be a way to save and later call the same set of instructions in any query we want. Let's try a sample use case. We want to create a function that will provide the square of a number. We want to call the function square. We want to be able to use this new function in any query moving forward without having to rewrite it. And we want to be able to change the logic of a function in a single place and have it propagate to other queries. In order to create functions, you need to have the ability to write or you'll get an error. When we write this function and execute it, we can see each component is listed in unique fields within a record. When we expand the database and expand functions, we can see the newly created math functions folder that we defined earlier. Inside of the folder, we see our newly created square function with an fx before it. We also cast the input value of the square function to a real data type. Let's test out this new function and see how it works. We can use print result, then place an equals, then use the function with a number in parentheses. We can see the output is 36, which is 6 times 6. When we created the function, we cast the input to a real data type. Let's see what happens if we place a number with a decimal in the function. We can see that the output is modified. If we want to modify the function and cast it to an integer instead of a real data type, we can. If we simply change the data type to int and rerun the line, it gives an error, saying it can't be executed because it already exists. If we change the first part from dot .create to dot .create or alter, it will allow us to modify the existing function. Now let's test out the modified function with a value of 6. Then the value of 6.1. What happens if we use 6.9? And finally 7. We can see that the output rounds down to the nearest integer. We could also create KQL functions for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius or other types of functions commonly used in our work environment. In the previous session, we used Evaluate Narrow along with StirCat to take results in a single record and pivot to having the fields in individual records.
In these two lines, we have two pre-existing functions, the narrow function and the stir cap function. What if we wanted to combine these two lines into a customized function that we can call? First, let's create a test data set that includes a single record that has four fields. Next, let's add two lines and verify the data output is pivoted vertically. Perfect. Now let's see if we can create a function that we can call that will perform the same task as the two lines. Let's call our new function data pivot. We can create a new folder and we can place an asterisk after the input table so it will work on any table. So now let's get our test data set with four fields in a single record and call the new function with the table name in the parentheses. We can see the output perform both lines of the query in a single function. You can see how helpful this may be if we have a 10 or 20 line subquery that we commonly run to perform results in our environment. Reducing this down to calling a single function not only allows centralized control of logic, it reduces the time needed to write the query, and it minimizes the likelihood of errors in individual queries. That's it for today's session on functions. For homework, go to Azure Data Explorer and click on My Clusters in the left-hand panel. Click on Create Database to create a new testing database that will allow you to have right privileges. Then create a function that will change Fahrenheit to Celsius. Test it to make sure it works. Place your function in the comment section to learn with and help others. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.